Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Imperfect Men's Club podcast. Uh, I'm here with my friend and colleague, Jim Gurley. And um, Jim, we were talking before we hit record about what we were going to talk about. And I, I was kind of pushing for this idea of communication. And you uh, gracefully agreed, graciously agreed. So there's so many angles to come at this from it. I think what we kind of concluded was, I think it's a self-awareness thing. If you go to the middle of our our circle, our wheel, um, the self, uh, self-awareness, I think leads to all kinds of wonderful things. And in, in this regard, the way my, my mind works from self-awareness, you get to self-evaluation. Okay. I'm aware now of myself. What does that mean? Okay. Well, let me evaluate me. Let me, let me be honest with me. And this communication thing came up, um, partly because of the work that I've done, uh, partly because of conversations I've had with my children, uh, of two different generations, uh, partly with regard to conversations I recently had on vacation with my girlfriend and some of her family. Um, and there were just so many interesting times for me where I thought, wow, I could have said that better, or they could have said that better. And if you lay that whole thing down on top of all the division that's going on right now, I think a lot of the division that's going on right now has to do with communication. Um, we're talking about, we seem to be talking about things and those, and one person thinks the word means this and the other person thinks the word means that, and you can't make progress like that, you know? And then on, on top of that, and I'll throw it back to you, we have this whole generation, maybe a couple of them now that have devices and social media accounts that we didn't have. And that allows you in my estimation to get lazy with your communications. As I said to you earlier, my kids don't default to conversation. They default to text messaging. I got to pull them into conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about all that, Jim. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I, first of all, I always appreciate it starting off with the self because that's where it all starts, right? And um, in self-evaluation, but self-awareness. Uh, it reminded me of a, a quote. You know, the most important conversation you'll ever have is with yourself. And and it's true. So that's mm -hmm. part, part of that. And, and then I've added to that a couple of times of saying, you know, most important conversation you'll ever have is with yourself and that and yourself is a crazy person because we're all crazy in our own special way. Yep. And, um, but yeah, uh, by the way, it's great seeing you, uh, having lunch with you and Shayla. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You too. That was fun. In the Incline village. What a, uh, what a special week. So that was pretty cool that we connected. Um, even though we're on both coasts, we got a chance to hang out for a while. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad we pulled that off. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's a, it's, it's because like you said, you were having conversations with, uh, uh, let's just say what's the generation 30 ish generation. So, yeah. 30, 28 to 32. -ish, yeah. Yeah. Late maybe. 20, early thirties. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, again, this is not any one specific person, but, but there are some commonalities of, conversations with that generation whether it's our sons our daughters my, my son your daughters or other people there's interaction there's there's a and, and like all generations there's a difference um mm -hmm. and something you said that i appreciate is that if you if you communicate to them in the wrong way they're very sensitive they're mm -hmm. they're oversensitive in my opinion about about trigger words and some of them are just outright ridiculous mm -hmm. but Somehow they've done a really good job of putting us on edge. I, I call them like uh, maybe booby traps that, or, or little pieces of shit for us to step in. So then they can say, I told you so, right? It's like, it's almost like they, in some subconscious weird way, get off on making us uh, wrong. And, and and that's just, you know, part of that is just, you know, maybe they're, they feel more empowered than they did when they were younger. And now, you know, this is their way to change the world, but they're confusing the shit out of people, especially when you start talking about, uh, you know, people that are going through a transition trans, how you're supposed to refer to them, uh, how we refer to, refer to other groups. Um, and uh, come on, you know, not everything is negative, right. And not everything is intended to be what I think somehow they've been able to frame everything as, you know, good and bad. And, and somehow we're in this weird place where we can be bad unless I, I, and I appreciate your approach. You know, we, 
we reframe that conversation and don't let them get away with that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's mm -hmm. a little bit uncomfortable at first, but man, if you can break through that, it's kind of a win-win because we can learn from them and then they can learn from us and, you know, it, it moves on. And, and this does tie into kind of what's going on with this. And I don't want to make the today's episode about the Palestinian Israeli Israeli protest, but I do think it speaks to that about you've got a young generation of leaders that have really are cowards. They've they've they, they've tried to appease this craziness to the point where it's not good for anybody. And then I I love the story. I, I just heard it, you know, 15 minutes ago about, about this uh, you know young group of fraternity guys saying, "Hey, fuck you guys!" You know, we're going all in American or something. I don't know. So it's a no, bit fearful, but I think it all ties together. What's your version of that? Just by the way, just so we can I think appreciate the moment of what how divided we are. Uh, at least on uh, college campuses, according to our mainstream uh, propaganda but, channels. Yeah, I think there's, you know, who knows what to believe anymore. It's it's news yeah. is just, it comes and goes so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk about communication, talk about miscommunication. And some <laughs> yeah. of it, it can, conspiratorially speaking, I suppose, yeah. is on purpose. Yeah. Uh, people with the same message over and over and over again. I mean, flat out, dude, politics aside, if you're telling me, from the river to the sea, and I ask you what river and what sea, and you can't answer the question, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're telling me you have no idea what you're communicating about. You're telling me you have no idea what you're protesting about, and you don't even know you're doing it. You know, talk about ignorance, but there's yeah. so many angles to this. And like I said, Jim, earlier, I think the, um, you know, the, the, the conversations with, our kids age, you know, mid twenties to mid thirties to, to make it br as broad as possible. Yeah. The conversations I had, one of the th things that came up over vacation with my girlfriend was how much we had in common that was completely attributable to the fact that we were both born in 1961, mm -hmm. like totally different parts of the country, different family structures, different religious structures, different everything. But Man, so much in common uh, that just because of we're from the same generation was very interesting. And another thing that came up was just in 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 conversation, she um, made a comment. My girlfriend made a comment about the fact that there really was in in the greater Reno area where she grew up, Nevada. Um, there was a, a, a really noticeable increase in the Oriental population. Mm -hmm. And uh, her daughter said, mom, you can't use that word. That's a slur. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, that's your opinion. That, mm -hmm. that word's been around forever. Yeah. And she did not use that word in a negative connotation. She used it observationally. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's, that's a perfect example of how this shit's gotten out of hand, you know? And I told, I told this story, this is kind of a funny story. I'll make it quick. Mm -hmm. I was in yoga class a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the instructors that happened to be teaching this upcoming class was Oriental, Asian. I don't know where she was from. I never right. asked. I don't care, you yeah. know, unless she, unless it came up in conversation because it's irrelevant, right? Yeah. Well, there's another Oriental guy who's, who sits next to me in the classes that we both attend. And she came up to me before class, before he got there and said, Mark, I need your help. I can't remember his name the guy that sits next to you, I can't remember his name. And he's so friendly. I'm embarrassed that I can't remember his name. And I said to her, you mean the little Oriental guy? And she said, yeah. <laughs> she took no offense to it at all because it perfectly described who she was talking about. And that's what she wanted. She wanted that piece of information. Now, I don't know if she walked away and thought to herself, oh man, I just accepted that from that big white guy. I shouldn't, I should have said something. Mm -hmm. Wasn't conscious. She didn't do it consciously. So that's that's the kind of thing I find fascinating. And um, you know, I'll I'll toss it back to you. But um it's just it's it's happening everywhere. Words are getting bastardized and it's not helping, it's hurting. Yeah, I, I've referred to it as the thought police, right? Somehow we've created this police force that wants to go out and police the way everybody thinks and say things uh perfectly in the way that they're comfortable with. And, and therefore that makes them uh, better, number one. It's, it's kind of a, think about it, it's an elitist point of view, right? Mm -hmm. who, who are they to decide what others should think? Um, 
but they've been pretty damn effective. You've got to, you've got to admit it, especially if you go, you know, mainstream media and even, even politicians. Uh, well, you, you know who, um, one of my favorite communicators in this day and age is Jordan Peterson. And, um, mm -hmm. one of the reasons he's one of my favorite communicators is I, I constantly, he does a couple things that I really like in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. He, number one, he listens intently, right? Number two, and so he listens empathetically. He's actually listening to what you're saying and then starts to formulate an opinion. But while he's formulating an opinion in response, he pauses mm -hmm. because he doesn't respond in a reactionary mode. He responds objectively with constructive thought having been put into his response. Mm -hmm. And he factors in the context of who he's talking to, what he's trying to accomplish. And this is all happening in a matter of seconds in his mm -hmm. head. You can see it going on. But the other thing he does extremely well is when someone feeds him back supposedly what he said, and it's not what he said, he immediately says, no, that's not what he I said. He doesn't let them. He doesn't let them. Get he away doesn't let with, them. Uh, yeah, controlling the, the, the narrative to, to their advantage because it's not, it's also not truthful. If that, if he agrees to that and continues on the conversation, then he's, what he's saying is, Hey, that's the way it is. And, 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 you know, I think this is where it goes, goes back to, you may lose some people, maybe even a friend or maybe of a friend of a friend by taking these people on. But I've, I think you've heard me say this before. I think being nice and being kind is very different. Being mm -hmm. nice to allow them to say what they want and not to offend them is not very kind. If no. you really care about them and you care about the relationship, you'll at least, you know, like to what you're saying, um, pause and ask them or understand their perspective but before you continue on. But allowing them just to to get away with, with this and then... Um, it just it's not it's not a win win. You you you'll. That's something I I actually I thought about this morning. There's a lot of complainers in the world right now, right? You ever mm -hmm. notice? There's a lot of complaining oh, yeah. going on. Oh yeah. So there's there's it's a real business <laughs> <laughs> to complain, right? Yep. And, yep. And, I, and let's just break this down about complainers, right? And and some of them you can see is um, changing the world. Other ones are just fucking complainers, you know? Yep. And, yep. and and one thing that I'm very uh, comfortable saying is nobody likes a complainer. They tolerate a complainer. And and to tolerate somebody, you never want to be just tolerated. That that's that that's the kind of person you'll tolerate them just because you have to deal with them for another gain somewhere else, but you don't really want to be around them and you will avoid them and the people they're associated with. So, yes. So yes. complainers, again, not that everything should just, nothing wrong with, with, with sharing your frustration through a complaint, but, but allow somebody to, to, for that, to resolve that complaint so we can move on, but to mm -hmm. just continue to complain and complain and complain. And that's kind, kind of what I see going on with these, you know, protests, whether site, whatever site it is. They just complain, yeah. complain, complain, but they really aren't doing anything that's that's going to change anything. They don't want to have a conversation. They want to complain about something without having a conversation or or even agree on what uh, success looks like, right? The well, outcome of success. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack there. And I think to you know, to, to Jordan Peterson, to finish up on that thought, the other thing he does, which you and I talk about a lot is asks questions. Yeah. And I think in the, in the art of communication, and I don't claim to be Mr. Communicator, I think I'm a pretty good communicator, but there's certainly people that are better orators than I, but it's like questions are disarming. Questions are not accusatory. Questions are inquisitive. Yeah. Questions are soft, even if they're hard, mm -hmm. you know, you're not, there, and you know you can you can couch them with things like hey there's no right answer that's a phrase that you enjoy mm -hmm. you know there's no right answer which is is usually the case I, I you know because most of this stuff is opinions and feelings anyway most of, very little of it is factual and we get that wrong too mm -hmm. I really appreciate people that distinguish between I don't know I'm not sure I'm pretty sure of that no I know that for a fact based on research I mean those are four different positions yeah they're not the same. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Something else I noticed, and in, in fact, uh, this came up recently in an event I was at. I feel very, very uh, comfortable, very strong about um, groups. Like I don't believe. I think groups are very normal. There's always groups of people, right? Catholics, Jewish, you know, Italians, Irish. You know, what, what, whatever it is, right? We've always had groups. Groups are groups are great. You know, they have mm -hmm. they have diversity of thoughts and and all different kinds of things. Um, but I find that smart people are smart people, and it cuts it cuts across everything. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what group you're in. If you sit down with somebody and you can just tell they're smart and you have something in common and you get it together, man, it's fun. It's cool because you can learn yeah. from one another. And it, and I don't, I really don't think it has anything to do with maybe some education, but not really. I don't even think it's education. I don't think it's necessarily money. Those things may help a little bit. Um, just smart people are smart people and they can be in any group and you never know when you stumble across one. But when you do, you know, it's, there's, there's something there. And, 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 I, and I'll make it a point to say something. If somebody that they're way, way out there, like we're from such different places, I'll say, Hey, you know, we've, we've been talking for, I say, you're very, I, I gotta be careful with the words smart or intelligence or aware or whatever it is. Um, you know what? In the end of the day, people just want to be around smart people they can identify with or learn from. And as well, long I think there's, yeah, yeah, I think there's, I, I totally agree. I also think there's another component to that, at least for me. And that's yeah. kind, kindness, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's kindness can take all kinds of forms like respectful and nice and, and, uh, you know, caring and, and loving and, but just kindness, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, when I, when I yeah. enter into conversations and I'm, I'm got a heightened awareness about this uh, now that I maybe didn't have in my twenties and thirties when I was a, a, a dumb idiot young man. Oh yeah. Um, I was but that for you, you were one decades. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm just <laughs> knucklehead. I, I refer to myself as an Neanderthal. Yeah. 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 But I mean, <laughs> kindness is kindness is like, you know, just, just don't be mean, you know, but, but also don't walk around worried about offending people. You know, yeah. I think there's way too much worry about offending people and there's way too much offense being taken. Yeah. It's just, it's just everywhere. Yeah. And, um, and I don't think that's, yeah. I mean, you know, back to your groups comment, I think the groups is the problem with groups, because I, I agree, there's a lot of great things. I mean, I love going into different cultures. Yeah. I love listening to people talk, speak different languages. I love listening to people talk about the differences between religions and history and groups yeah. are great for that kind of stuff. But if you're in that group, that also means that you're this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. That's that is, not true. It is, yeah. Intention is the other word I was looking for. If you have good intentions, it doesn't matter what group you're in. Uh, but but I but I will share some different perspectives on this because I've I've had some conversations with people in very different groups, and it changed my perspective a little bit. And I'll I'll share two of them. Uh, of course, I won't share the people name because they're very close. One was about privilege and and I, and we don't think about it uh, or I don't always think about it um everybody I think has um maybe experienced not being privileged maybe not maybe some haven't right at, at different times in your life you know being let's just talking about you know again you're a, you're a six six foot four white male right mm -hmm. that that um that has some privileges, right? Yeah, you know, I guess the 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 word itself, I think, has taken on a, another example of it's taken on a, its its own meaning. And I, I wish we had it up on the screen. I'd read the definition of privilege because I think it's another one of those words that you can you can really beat people over the head with it, right? So I mean, uh -huh. if but if, if we're I want about self awareness, yeah, we we have to have. Uh, we have to enter the conversation with knowing that there's an, there's other things going on besides just our perspective. Right. And, and, and the word privilege, like you said, I totally appreciate what you're doing. We do need to redefine it, what it means, because yeah. our definition of it may not be like everything. You got to update your shit, right? You gotta well, you know, it's, it's like, you know, if you believe in God, which I do, yeah. um, then there's a lot of stuff that's predestined, you know, like I was born the way I looked, 
I had nothing to do with the way that I looked. I had nothing to do with how tall I got. I had nothing to do with how athletically gifted or ungifted I was. Uh, I had nothing to do with the color of my skin or my eyes. I mean, there's so much I had nothing to do with. And, and everyone has things that they had nothing to do with, right? Mm -hmm. That's like taking a small, uh, you know, a poor black boy in a, in an underprivileged neighborhood. Why does one of them become a hall of fame athlete and the other one's in jail? Like, why is that? Is that because of privilege? I don't think so. I think they sounds like they both had the same privilege or lack of privileges. And one of them rocketed to stardom and the other one ended up throwing his life away. That's where the answer is. Why is that? Why is that happening? Why does the one yeah, guy go to it's, prison? It, it, it's a, it's an inch. I didn't expect it, but it's a very interesting and good uh, comeback to privilege, right? When, when was privileged with, with amazing athletic ability and genetics that, that qualified him to, to be paid millions of dollars and play in the NBA. But uh, that's a privilege, right? I, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's real. it really speaks to that, that whole idea that if we're going to talk about a word, let's get under the covers, yeah. right? Because we're just skimming the surface of this stuff to serve a purpose. You know, it's like, think of the words that don't mean anything anymore, Jim. I, like racist doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Everyone apparently is a racist. I, I can't keep track of it, right? What's a Nazi? I thought those guys were all dead. Yeah. You know, what's a Nazi, you know, yeah. what, but what's, what, it, there's so many words that were just abusing, yeah, but they're, they're always, everything's evolving. Everything's always changing. So that's, so that's, you're right. That's the privilege thing. Again, I don't, it doesn't go anywhere, but it, but it is something to be aware of. And another, another perspective I heard recently was, uh, and again, going back to these protests and um, it was a great, great piece. It was the guy in CNN and he was talking about how it's different from the 1960s to today and the college uh, campus protests in the 1960s uh, versus, you know, obviously regarding the um, Vietnam War and even apartheid you know, later on in the uh, 80s or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he was comparing the two. I thought it was a great piece. So was, wasn't was trying, wasn't leading one was better. But he did say that there is a difference that the, he, he believed that this generation of Pro protesters really don't even understand what they're protesting about. They're mm -hmm. and um, and this is you know pro Palestinian when most of them don't really even understand what that means. And mm -hmm. and, and that was his point. Is is but but the other thing was um, and this is the, the perspective that kind of changed my life. When you're young people, just they're mad about a lot of things, and this was just the one issue that that they can act out on. So I, I, I'm not giving them excuses, but, but I, but I do think it's a symptom of something bigger going on. I think they were completely lied to. If you look at this generation of college uh -huh. students because yep. of COVID and our government, you know, they got a shit sandwich from their, they didn't even get a high school senior experience, a lot of them. And, and now a lot of them can't even have um, a, a college experience. It's, Think of that generation of kids. You know, they yeah. they were the the COVID kids. They they got shitted on every everywhere. You know, especially you lived in California. You had no high school experience towards the end. You didn't get a graduation. You didn't get a prom. And then here we are now. They're getting ready to graduate, and they and then many of these campuses. So they're mad. They're angry on, on a yeah. lot of levels. And this is their one way to act out. And I I just thought that was a, a good perspective that. They're just, they don't, they don't really know. They're just mad. Well, I think I, 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 I couldn't agree with you more. I'll, I'll counter that if you will with, I know, and I'm sure you do too. I know a bunch of kids that are in that age group. You know, I, I've got, a, I've got nieces and nephews, mm -hmm. at least one or more yep. didn't graduate high school in front of any people. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a ripoff. Total uh, rip -off. However, however, this particular niece of mine is extremely well adjusted, has a conservative worldview, doesn't complain about anything, is completely responsible. So she took this one in the in the in the seat and said, okay, life goes on. 
right? And and we're we're I think we're missing that message. We're we're allowing people to stay in complainer mode without yeah. consequence. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And you know, so is that? Yeah, and it's like it's, so it's not what happens to you in life; it's how you respond to what happens to you. It's in life. all about how you respond to what happens yeah. to you. And you know, you go your fit. One of your favorite phrases is "you go bitter or you go you get better." You get better, and, yeah. and it's like that's 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 the choice. Okay, I didn't get to graduate high school in front of my class. The world's still spinning. Stop yeah. fucking complaining. Get up Stop and move complaining on. Complaining and and by everything has a cause and effect. So yeah. just be, just because things aren't going well here, and and maybe some opportunities are gone, there's new opportunities created. Yep. So uh, yeah, no, I was I was just uh, I was just in my uh, my uh, my other membership group, and we were talking about mm -hmm. exactly that. You know, it's, cause it's, and effect. Yeah. Well, cause and effect and wonder and love, just like, okay, I can, yeah. I can wonder about this to get to the bottom of it. And then I can just shower it with love and gratitude. Even mm -hmm. if it's, even if it's like my ex-wife, you know, yeah. even if it's like toxic, like yeah. if I can, sh if I can shower her or the memory of her with gratitude and love, all the anger that was pent up in that is just dissipates. It just goes away, you yeah. know? So communication is, is a big part about the choices that we make as well is how we communicate and, and complaining as, as an art of communication. I mean, it's funny how it all ties together, but if, yeah, speaking if, of that, you know, as we wrap up, let's tie this one together. Right. I think it started off with self self-awareness. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the flywheel. Then and, self uh, self evaluation from that yeah, self assessment. That's right. And then of course there's health, mental health, physical health, which, this absolutely affects your mental health. If you're not feeling good about the world or your relationships with others and, and you can't get this squared away, it's going to affect your mental health that eventually affects you. So I, there is a health component to it. Um, in terms of profession, yeah, I think if you're going to have any kind of a profession, you're going to have to deal with these different generations, whether you're hiring them or working with them. You have to relate to them. You can't just exclude them and... Uh, from our lives um, well i think we the art the, 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 i think the art of communication as well in the context of that is that and i remember i think you might remember we had this discussion a couple months ago i had a, a conversation with a couple of 25 26 year olds and I, upon reflection i thought to myself i guess there's it makes sense to communicate differently with different people um well, of course that's it, it makes sense to read the room have to do that yeah. yeah, to yeah. read the room. And I think generational differences, it's it's a balancing act to me. It's like, I'm not kissing anyone's ass and yeah. I'm not just going to appease well, hijacked, Let me finish my circle. You hijacked yeah, my yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so wanted to pull I, it back into communication. Yeah, 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 but don't interrupt me. I'm trying to get through the circle here. I'm trying, I'm trying to do a lap <laughs> and, you're, and you're, you're tripping me up. Fucking so, communicator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, it's so a profession, so we, yeah, we talk about that. And then... Uh, then was is this apps today we did touch on worldview because there is, there are world views in terms of politics or childhood that play into this and mm -hmm. and it's projecting those world views on somebody else um can be good but can this be bad too because they had different experiences so th th definitely worldview and then uh the last not the last two is uh, money well everything affects money because if you can't communicate effectively then it's going to affect your ability <laughs> to make money right so mm -hmm. yeah there's there's some money stuff there and then of course today would definitely fall under the last one that's others people right uh, men women particularly women um it's different you know there it's a whole different conversation than it than it was and then um Man, he does. Our sons, our brothers, our, our everybody else. So, but, yeah, uh, no, it's it's uh well, well, we always fall back on the structure of the wheel. It's it's really a handy tool to have. Yeah. I think I think from a takeaway standpoint, Jim, I think that, and I'm gonna probably uh, write a newsletter about communication because it's been on my mind and I gotta get it out of my head for my own well being. Um, but I think that what I've what I've had success with in no particular order is, and we said this earlier. Think about entering into conversations with a question mm -hmm. instead of instead of a statement. I think that's yeah. a very valuable piece of advice, yeah. and I it it serves me so well. It diffuses yeah. confrontation. Is it's not confrontational. The second thing is, if someone says something to you that you don't agree with or doesn't make sense, I think it's beneficial to say, 
I don't think I understood what you're trying to say there. I, I wonder if you could reframe that for me. I didn't I didn't catch what you're trying to get at. And and that's also disarming. It's a, it's a form of questions, obviously. Um, yeah. And the other yeah. thing I, I, I share with people all the time is try not to enter into a conversation trying to change anyone's mind mm -hmm. or trying to be right. You know, those yeah. aren't, I don't think those are beneficial goals. And I think the art of communication, we, we're sitting on a wonderful opportunity right now to get better at communication. And when I've communicated well in the past, things have gone very well for me. I've accomplished things. I've made money. I've, I've helped people. Um, I think the art of communication is not getting the attention it deserves. It, it seems like, um, to me, a, a huge opportunity for the, the world to, to be a better place. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring that up. I, I, I was working on this. You know, I create these mind maps on these, but you know, I'll, we'll kind of wrap up with this. But um, again, I always like to start off with a quote, right? To get what you want, give others what they want. It's mm -hmm. It really is true. Give them what mm -hmm. they want and you get what you want. It's because there is such thing as a win-win. And then... Um, and then I break it up in these five areas. Um, number one is assumption. Um, try to establish a desired outcome when you enter a conversation with somebody so that mm -hmm. you have at least a, an assumption of what a positive outcome is for them mm -hmm. and you, because that may get redefined in the mm -hmm. beginning of that. Um, but, but I really try to start everything off with an assumption that if this happens and this happens, and what does success look like, right? The other one was fear. You're, um, I think we're driven by fear far more than we realize, whether consciously or subconsciously. Mm -hmm. F fear is a driver in every conversation. It's always going on. So try to establish what those fears are. They probably won't share them with you, um, mm -hmm. but but you can at least know. And then, um, and then, yeah, like I think what you've been saying all this whole episode, uh, a mutual respect and under respect and understanding for one another. Mutually respect their position. Mm -hmm. and, and um and truly you know, authentically um that let that be mutual it's not just about what you want out of the conversation but you respect what whatever theirs is which may be completely different and then you know past present and future right their past experience are going to play into that mm -hmm. um there's the present the conversation now and then there's the future that maybe could be a better future for both of you with the outcome and then of course the 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 most important one is transparency and clarity. Be transparent and try to be as have clarity. Work hard to create clarity so there's it's not ambiguous. I can't say the word. Uh, ambiguous. Thank you. Thank you. For yeah. Help, so. <laughs> well, anyway. I you know I was going to bring it up, but I think that you just did kind of by default. Is that one of the reasons that you and I communicate differently is because you're dyslexic. You know, oh, yeah. and, and and the adjustments that you've made, and I've said this to you before, not kissing your ass at all, just saying, I think it's marvelous. I think you, it's so clear to me that you said, fuck that. I'm not letting that take over my life. This thing's beating me up ar enough already. I'm, I'm figuring out a way around that over it or right fucking through it. And it's, yeah, it's quite, I, it's quite, it's quite admirable, Jim. <laughs> I appreciate it. Not to make this a love fest, but I have to say it, uh, it was, it, it helps a lot when you have people, when you're surrounded up with people like yourself that help, you know, like, like I couldn't say the word, right. That's, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just could not get that word out. You know, yeah. that used to really bother me. Right. I but, know, but I you'll know. come in and, 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 you know, you got that for me. Right. And I can laugh at myself. It's, I'm not particularly proud of that, but there's certain things I just, you know, the dyslexic mind just doesn't allow me to do. So. Well, and it's also not something you had any control over. You were, you were blessed with that. <laughs> so yeah, what a funny way to, to wrap up on privilege, right? Yeah. <laughs> You could call that a privilege, right? So, yeah. Well, I was thinking of I was thinking of the title, and I was thinking of the Led Zeppelin song "Communication Breakdown" came into my brain. So I'm going to see if I can play yeah. around with that as a title. But yeah, we should no, do that. We should we should find some good songs like that to. to yeah. To, yeah. yeah. So, no, it's good. I think you yeah. can't you can't talk enough about communication, Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great topic, Mark. I appreciate you bringing it up. And yeah, until next too. week, I'm glad we got one in before the week wrapped up. So. Yeah. Me too. Thanks, All man. Right. All right. Have a great weekend. You too.